Hi, everybody. We're back. The time is 9-11. There are certain rules in life, right, like traffic laws that help to keep us safe on the roads. These rules keep us accountable. They keep us going. They keep things reliable and consistent. But are they necessary? Here to help us break it down is Dr. Karen Ryan with Nystrom and Associates. Nice to see you again. Thanks for being back. Hi, nice to see you both. Okay, so we were we were told about this segment and told that there are fake rules that we're living by. <laughs> Tell me exactly what, what we mean by the, the phrase fake rules. What is that? Yeah. What we mean by fake rules are rules that we set for ourselves that don't really have any basis that tend to be judgmental and critical in nature where we think if I don't do this, then I'm not good enough or I'm failing. There's, a, there's that undertone of like failing or not good enough or not being successful or being lazy. And so there's they're the, the critical rules that don't tend to serve us well. So uh, give, give, give us, I have a couple ideas in my head, but mm -hmm. give me some specifics of what you're talking about. Yeah, and I have a great example that a client gave um, me permission to share. And so the rules tend to be, if I mow the lawn, then I have to also weed, whip, and fertilize. Or if I go to the gym, I need to do 45 minutes of cardio, I need to stretch and also do weights. Or if I'm gonna shower, I need to wash my hair, shave, and then dry my hair after. Right, so these are fake rules. And my client gave this example of realizing how much it became a barrier to her doing anything. So what happened for her was she needed to take out the trash because the next day was trash day and her um, trash upstairs was overflowing. And so she thought, okay, I'm gonna take out the trash upstairs, but then if I take the trash up upstairs, I should also do downstairs. And if I do downstairs the kitchen trash, what I always do then is I clean out the refrigerator because any food that's gonna spoil, I wanna go out with the trash. Oh, and then I have chicken in there, and I'm gonna, I need to make the chicken tonight because that won't make it for another week. So it went from her just simply having to take out one trash that was overflowing to making chicken at 10 o'clock at night. I, I, I can relate to that 100%. Absolutely. I'm sure everybody else can too. So. Yeah. So I'm curious, I mean, what this does to, to the body, right? I feel like if you're going to do a job, do it right. But you're right. We've all been in a situation like the one that your client was in. Mm -hmm. What is this doing to us to not just be able to do one simple task, but then taking it so many steps further and being overwhelmed and not doing it? Yeah, it's really hard on our self-esteem. And it's really hard on our self-worth because they seem so silly. Like when we look at it, we can be like, that's not a rule. Or no, I don't. I don't have to make chicken. But there's this emotional underpinning of it of, but if I don't, I'm not doing it right. Or right. I'm not good enough. Or I'm failing. And so when we live out these fake rules, we allow them to keep being truths when they're not really truths. That has a impact on our self-esteem and self-worth. It makes us feel more stressed. It makes us feel more down. And it makes us not feel great about ourselves. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. Um, the the kids are good at keeping you honest about these kinds of things when you try to set rules on them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you'd be like, listen, if if you're going to stay out on a Saturday night till 1130, then you're going to vacuum the stairs the mm -hmm. next morning. Or, you know, yeah. that's just an example. And, but they're the first ones to call, to like call it out and say, why? Yeah. Why is that? Yes. So what happens to us? Uh, as we get older, where you just store your mindset gets to be that you have to follow these certain rules. I love your example right there, Chris, of saying to yourself, why? Mm -hmm. Who mm -hmm. made that rule? Yeah. Is that really a rule or am I putting that on myself and that's not fair? So just like when that kid asks you that question, you've got to answer, well, because it's dangerous and because I want to make sure you're safe and I want you to have a good night's sleep. So then when you challenge yourself of like, well, if I go to the gym, I have to do this and this and this, that's you can say, why? Is that true? Or is something better than nothing? Because when we tie more onto it and make these expectations for ourselves, they tend to become barriers, and then we do nothing, which then makes us feel worse. So, like, mm -hmm. if my client yeah. hadn't taken out the trash, she would have felt worse. And so, what she did was she just gave herself permission to take out the trash and put it by the the door. Then she felt better, did the other trash, and then said, "You know what? I can take them outside." And she felt amazing because she had now done three things when she gave herself permission to just do the one. So are there words we need to look out for? Are there feelings? Is there the, the inclination to do something and then the, ooh, that, that is, should be a trigger and something we can watch? If, if we recognize, like Chris and I, that we are these people. Yes, we are all these people. <laughs> yes. We'd like to be a little bit less these people. Mm -hmm. How do we get there? Yeah, some of the key phrases are, well, I have to. Well, I must. Well, I need to. Um, and then the underpinning is, and if I don't, then what? Because then it's, if I don't, then it says something negative about me as a person, which is absolutely false, right? Like if I end up not taking out the trash, does that make me a bad person? No. Right. And so that's what we watch for, like, I must, I have to, I should. If I don't, then I'm, and what are we putting in that, 
that does not fit and is not fair or needed. Huh. Well, this is uh, it's a, such a simple concept, but uh, it is it's very enlightening. I have yeah. a question real quick before we let you go. Is it yeah. okay to notice someone is doing this and point it out to them? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just thinking for my husband, like if he's, if I'm, can mm -hmm. I say, hey, ask yourself why? What happens if you only do one? I mean, is it okay to point that out or is that just creating issues? No, I think, I think if you do it in a loving and a compassionate way and you highlight, you know, and really affirm them to say, you know, you had a busy day. You've already done this. We don't need to do all these things tonight. We can just go to bed now. You can give yourself that permission. Or kind of asking, you know, like, where does this, like, it seems like you're feeling like you have to do all this. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think you have to. Um, and just kind of giving that loving compassion and helping yeah. them to yeah, maybe have the, a different perspective. Got to watch the tone on that conversation. Because one thing could be interpreted a whole other <laughs> way to, oh, I can't take care of myself. Now you got to tell me how to <laughs> take out the garbage, too. Yeah. For example. Giving ourselves a little grace. That's I like right. that message. All right. Good Thank stuff. Thank you, Dr. Ryan. Nystrom and Associates does provide care in the fields of psychiatry, uh, uh, psychology, family therapy, and more. So if you're struggling with stress, anxiety, depression, or addiction, you should reach out to them right, there, right away. Their information is posted on our website. Just go to minnesotalive.com.